That's one of the biggest birches I've ever seen. That's fascinating. I didn't even uh, you know this, like that in a, in, in a home. This is a street I don't get on much, so you don't really know what's here until. Well, you this is one of the benefits of yeah. what, the work I do, which I've been up and down every street in most of eastern Massachusetts. So you just kind of cruise the neighborhood at two miles an hour and try to hit every both sides of every street. That's right. Looks like I picked up something out of the catch basin here. This is a hydrogen fuel in here. And if there's too much hydrogen coming in, it'll bounce the needle around a bit. So this isn't exact. I have other equipment that I, that I test with, and that's why I put the dig safes down. That's why I can come back. I know that there's a gas leak here. Mm -hmm. And look, what you can see kind of what happens to these trees is they die back. Uh, you can't tell now this time of year, but the tree will die back. As the roots die underground, the tree dies back from the top. How long does it take for a leak uh, to do damage? Is it a matter Dep of years, It depends months, on the years? severity of yeah. the leak and the, and the proximity to the, uh, to the uh, root structure. So when I get to an area, I like to check everything. You know, if I have a leak in the area, I'll check it all out. Because I'll draw a report up next. So does that gas tend to come out between uh, curbs like that, or? Yeah, it's right at, right, at, right, at, right at the curb joints. That's where it can escape. You can see it's very tight. Right. Now, I'm going to show you now how I do vegetation. And there's a gas leak right here. And I have a missing tree on that side of the street. And what you're going to see here, this is how I learned gas leak detection my first day at work uh, 30 years ago, was if you look down the curb line here, you'll see the grass in front of this telephone pole. Okay, see how it's nice and green? Right. Nice and green, all nice, and then as you get up towards the tree, watch what happens. Look at, look at the vegetation up here by this tree, and all of a sudden you'll see it start to get black and, and uh, the grass isn't growing as good, okay? And then you'll see a big mark right in here. So this is what I look for. And you can see it right down in here, right by this tree. Do you see it? You can smell it. That's why I have the windows open. Yeah. Now the real question, we know it's by that tree, is it by this tree? Here's the water service right here. So the gas, a lot of times they run close. I don't know how this tree's doing. Uh, we'll see in the spring. We come back in June and I'll have my arborist evaluate it. You can see they've had some problems with it. See they're cutting right. stuff off here. Well, it's got buds for you next year. No, it's year. got buds. Well, it's yeah. not dead. We know that. Yeah. I can smell it here too. Oh yeah. Well, it, yeah. see, this is a very still day. Right. It's early morning, there's no wind, so the gas kind of hangs around. It's easier to detect first thing in the morning than it is when the wind picks up in the afternoon. Yeah, there's been gas up in the yard here. So it's killing, killing this here. It could be gas right up in here, too. Oh, the smell is so strong here. It's number 32. So we have that big maple over there, which does have some gas under the canopy, so we're going to put that one in. That's tree one, and tree two is just off here. Go like this, gas goes like this. This first one's an ACPL, that's a Norway maple, a code that my avarice uh, did. That's my pre-mark for dig day. There was a bigger tree here before. This is a replacement tree. Yeah. 
You can see that big hole here. And this one was planted and it's been hanging on for years. It's 28% gas, uh, and it's only a few inches down. You know, like I said, I could only go down. But so that's percent of gas, gas in the air in, in the, the soil. air in the soil. Now normal oxygen level should be 21%. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me see what it read here. The oxygen level should be down by 20%, uh, which would be 20% would be four. Two times no. two, two times 20 is, is so four. So you reset that to be measuring oxygen. Right. Of it's gas. now measuring oxygen, and it's at the 13 level. Mm. So what what it means is that there's a methane-eating bacteria down there that further depletes the oxygen. So we're down to 12 oxygen. If I go down to my depth that I want to be about 18 inches, it'll be even less. So what's happening is it's drawing from the top of the hole. You have to be have to have it nice and tight. So we do these testings all around the trees, and my, my guess is the gas is going down and, and getting in, in that root structure and going right down in here. Uh, it looks like there was another tree down there. Um, you know, I don't know. I'll come back and I'll come back and do thorough testing. They've got mm -hmm. gas up in the yard over there. The leak's pretty good sized here. This is where I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm smelling it right here too. Yeah. So you so, can see where. So basically, the it's it's a combination of the gas displaces oxygen, and it does this thing with the bacteria that uh, or the. Yeah, and it dries out the soil too. The the gas uh, is makes the soil very dry. So what I'll do is I'll measure these. At breast height, it's about three and a half feet. This one's a 26 inch Norway maple. Now, where, where that's lost so many branches at, at the top, is that uh, something that could have been caused by or accelerated it could have by it, the. And it, it, and it could be a combination of age and pruning, and you know, it's right in the wires. Uh, there's a lot of things that affect these trees, it's not always the gas. See, this is an 8, that was a 26. Okay. Go back to my phone. National Grid, if you are calling to report... Please hold. Your emergency representative will be with you momentarily. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance purposes. Is this Phoebe again? Yes, it is. Hey, yeah, hey, Phoebe. Sorry I got cut you? off last time. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm all right, thanks. Uh, Bob Ackley, Gas Safety. I got a leak in Newton. Okay, the address? Number 32, that's 32 Manor House Road. Is it M-A-N-O-R or M-A-N-O-R? Nope. M-A-N-O-R, Manor House Road, yep. And that's two words, Manor, then House. Then road. Right. That, that would actually be three words, but. Okay. <laughs> and where's the leak, sir? Uh, out, out in front of the house at the curb. Okay, Bobby. Thanks for calling it in. All right. Thanks a bunch. Have a great day, Phoebe. You too. Take all right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So do all these operators know you by now? <laughs> well, they switched over. They used to all be in Waltham, and now they're in uh, New York and in Northboro, Mass. And um, uh, so some of them, I just, some of them do know me. I am just going to uh, leave them knock, a note. I, I'm going to knock on this door here because this is this is um, a pretty good gas leak here, and I just want to let them know that I called the gas company. The other leak over there it was just a very small leak right. out in the street. This one's up here. It's in, more into in the their yard. yard. Yeah. I just like to let them know that I called the gas company. So I'll be right back.